What do you make about the fact that they've stopped taking bets on you? A bit of a shock. I mean, the whole thing has been like a roller coaster, about a complete shock. It has been absolutely unbelievable. How did it start? What happened? I was literally lying in bed <laughs> in Miami. My phone rung, and it was a very good friend of mine. Um, and he basically said, you're all over the Daily Mirror. It didn't actually say why, and it was very early, so I put the phone down and didn't ask oh, why. God, what have I done now? Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm from Essex. So I literally called back and said, listen, what do you mean I'm all over the paper? And that's where, obviously, everything started there. But I think everything goes back to the Dancing with the Stars, when Len decided he was leaving the shows, um, and everyone assumed he would leave Dancing with the Stars and do Strictly, which, again, I did as well. So I, it was bittersweet for me, because I, as soon as Len decided to stay in America, suddenly I was thinking, oh, I'm done now. That's, that's my opportunity, that once-in-a-lifetime chance uh, is now see. gone. So... But now it leaves the door open where you could replace him on Strictly, quite possibly. And actually, you, Len, plays quite an important, a huge importance in your life. Because oh, you've been dancing since the age of seven, and you nearly yeah. gave it all up, didn't you? Because that at school, correct. kids were really unkind, like yeah. it's not a boy thing to do to be a dancer and very Wanted. cruel. Yeah. But it was Len who you met around about that age that told you to keep on dancing. That's right. I went to school in Romford. I was brought up in Romford, Essex, and one of the only dancers in the school, obviously. And they used to, used to pick on me and bully me, and I went to the Romford Community Centre, and Len Goodman was doing a show with his wife, Cherry, um, and he got on the microphone. It wasn't so much the dancing. The dancing was fabulous. I mean, it was yeah. really, really amazing, and it was very entertaining. But when he got on the microphone and he spoke, I was like... That's who I want to be. I yeah. want to be that man. Wow. Because he was just, like, funny. He was, you know, the accent and everything. Like, he talked like me. And I was like, this is the guy I want to be. Yeah. So from that very young age, Len played a, definitely a part in me continuing because that's when I actually decided I'm going to carry I on dancing. I want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your CV... Um, thank you for coming in for the interview today. <laughs> uh, your CV is yeah, very... No pressure, very Mr Saturday impressive. night, yeah. <laughs> 30 international titles, British Open Ballroom, British Open Latin, judged over 40 Ballroom World Championships. So you worked, obviously, uh, as, as we said, in America. The publicity machine started without you yeah, is rolling very nicely. Yes. What happens if it doesn't happen? Aren't you going to feel a bit daft? No, do you know, that has gone through my mind, and I have said that to my mum a few times. <laughs> I could be the guy that didn't get the job. But the way I look at it is you're not really replacing Len, because Len is, is the matriarch of a family. Because, yeah. strictly, it's not the same as anything else I, I've ever been involved with. And Dancing with the Stars is slightly different. It's not as... It doesn't feel like a family as much as... Strictly. Strictly, it's in the blood of the English people. It's like, it's, it's literally, Len is that matriarch and you're replacing a matriarch. You can't. So whoever goes in there, it's not, a, for me, it's not going to be a direct replacement for Len. It's going to be a new beginning, a new... Family. But Len is always going to be the matriarch. When he's, I mean, the pressure, knowing that Len is going to be sitting at home watching. watching you would be the biggest pressure if I was to get the job. Oh, I'm sure he'd love it to be you with your history. Um, some of your stories are incredible. Um, you taught Michael Jackson to dance. Yes. Not to dance, it's all dance, but the, the cha-cha. Oh, exactly, yeah. So, so this is an extraordinary story, and this is why you were working with the Brunei, Brunei yeah. Royal Family. So this is like a movie. What, what did they oh, used was. to do? It was like a TV show movie, a blockbuster, all in, all in one. Uh, my partner and I, my wife and I, went over there um, to teach. Yeah. Only them. And I had... It was all secret. Everything was... There were so many secrets. And I would literally be in a ballroom, even without my partner knowing. Most of what I did, my partner didn't know. My partner was doing things that I didn't know. Um, it was just... It was a really strange world, um, but so full of such amazing experiences. And with, with Michael, I was in the, the little dance studio, and the doors opened, and I would never know who was standing there. Sometimes it was uh, the Prime Minister of India, actually, on one occasion. It was a Sultan of Malaysia. It was, on one occasion, Michael Jackson, which is the only time <laughs> in my life like I've ever been surreal. speechless. I literally stood there, and I actually wished at the time my partner had been there, to be honest, to as well, to witness. Too. Because I'm like, I can't tell anyone. Everything was so... I'm thinking, oh, my God. My, so my, my heart just... Say a word. And what no. was he like to teach? Did he Incredible. pick it up quickly, I imagine? Oh, oh. Of course. Yeah, I mean, he learned everything so far. We've done basic cha cha, but the really strange thing was uh, a few years before, my partner and I, we always used to use modern music if we could. So yeah. I, we've done shows to Billy Jean, for example. Yeah. Um, I think on, on social media the other day, uh, always look on the bright side of life. Yeah. We actually done a fox trying the show to that. Right. I'm too sexy for my shirt. So, which again comes back to the Len, because that's the sort of thing Len would do. Yeah. Mm. So that all goes back to why I'm such a fan of, of Len's. Um, but I went to the booth, and the only thing I could find that wasn't like your, your normal 
one of the Mill Music was the Michael Jackson CD, and I saw Billie Jean, oh, we don't used to do a show to that, I'm going to use that. So I put Billie Jean on, so we actually had the lesson to Billie Jean. How and he exactly. picked up, I was dancing it, it wasn't so much a lesson, it was I would show him what to do. Well then he put his, it. I assume he put his own spin yes. on it. Well that's what he did, in his words he made it funky actually. Yeah. So oh, he put wow. these little moonwalks in and he'd done a few like twists and everything and it was just, I ended up trying to do what he was doing. It was much easier for him to do what I was doing than well, for me to copy him. Story. The guy's a genius. I mean, he was an absolute story. genius. Well, listen, we wish you well. I mean, we, we had do. Anton we back do. in here yesterday denying he'd yeah. been approached <laughs> yeah, yes. and so you haven't had an official approach yet. So, you know, we're, it's all in the melting pot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just, to, uh, just to conclude your, oh. uh, to conclude your, um, your interview here, how would you, uh, how would you judge us? Can I speak first? Yeah. Oh, I'll give you more than a seven. <laughs> <laughs> that feels oh. very natural for you somehow. Or an eight. An eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's creeping up.